บีนใช่ป่ะคะบีนก็เป็นบีนเฮ้ยไกด์สุดคาร์ล่าฉันอยู่ที่ร้านบอนแอปเปอร์ติทัสคิทเชนและฉันจะทำให้เป็นผลิตภัณฑ์ที่ดีที่สุดของบีนส์บีนส์เป็นหนึ่งในสิ่งที่ฉันมีคำถามมากที่สุดทุกครั้งคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันอร่อยที่สุดคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มันไม่ฟุ้งฟ่ายคุณทำอย่างไรให้มัน Things that once you know the technique, you will make beans the right way for the rest of your life. Patch Troffer, the chef at Marlowe and Sons in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, um, made the most incredible beans that my then vegetarian son, not vegetarian anymore, ate beans like I'd never seen the kid eat beans before. And Patch shared his method with me, which um, really synthesized a ton of things. First thing, buy the good bean. These are. Butter beans, also known as baby limas, the method that I'm showing you will work with really any bean. Gigante beans, Corona beans would be a really good choice in this preparation. The amount of time since they were a fresh bean to when you're buying them as a dried bean is that measure of freshness, and it does really matter. A bean that's been dried for many years, sitting in some dusty place in a dusty old supermarket, is going to take a lot longer to cook and is not going to have as much flavor as a freshly dried bean. Once you've done that, you have to soak your beans. Sorry, but it's true. The next best thing to do is to bring the beans up to a boil, cover them in the cold water, bring them up to a boil. Put a lid over them and let them sit for one hour. That sort, sort of mimics what happens in the overnight soak, but the overnight soak is better. So you choose. How do you want to be? You want to be good. You want to be great. Cold water right out of the tap, friends. And I'm going to do a generous amount because this is also going to be my cooking liquid. That's another question people ask all the time. Do I drain the beans if you cook it in the Water that you soak the beans in isn't that why you get gas? I don't know why you get gas, but it's not because of the bean soaking liquid. So these we soaked overnight. Obviously, yesterday was Sunday. So you did this at your house? Yes. Denise did this at her house. That's real dedication right there. But look at the difference. Unsoaked. See how little they are? Same bean. Much plumper. It's fully hydrated. It's going to help it soften. The basic secrets. To making beans, are these three things: salt, fat, and time. That's really everything. If you have salt, fat, and time, you have everything you need to make an incredible pot of beans. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some salt. A lot of salt. Beans can take a lot of salt, kind of like potatoes, eggs, rice, other things that are very basic that people are very confused about. And Salting the water is a little bit like salting the water for pasta. It means that the bean is going to get seasoned, heat medium high to high, because I want to bring this up to a boil. As it's coming to a boil, I'm going to skim off any foamy stuff that comes to the top. Totally normal. Anytime you see that foam rising to the surface, that's just um, impurities. It could be little bits of protein. It could be other pieces of impurities that are. Breaking free and rising to the top, and I don't really want them to be there the whole time, which is why I will skim. The temperature is going to go uh, very low. I want the beans to simmer incredibly gently. The more they agitate, the more likely they are to get smashed up against each other. Um, they will cook unevenly. Their flesh will break through their skin. The cooking liquid will get cloudy, and so once this has come up to a simmer, lowering the heat and going really as as gentle as you can afford to go, you can put as much or as little garlic as you want. I'm going to smash and peel the garlic, and then it's just going to like be in there. The other thing that Patch taught me when I Emailed him and begged him to tell me what the secret of his secret pot of beans was. He's salting at every step of the way. That was one thing. The other thing was he talked about the amount of fat that the man puts into the cooking liquid, and he said an inch of a fat cat on top. He uses whatever good fat he's got. So olive oil, 
you want something that tastes good, right? Because if you're using that much, it's really becoming a flavoring agent of your bean. And then it's just gonna make the broth that you get at the end so much more incredible. But then he was like, whatever rendered fat you happen to have lying around. And for someone who is literally hoarding little jars of rendered fat all throughout my refrigerator, I mean, you just couldn't tell somebody better news. So in the optional category, we have garlic, lemon. Patch was like, oh, you know, when you have a charred lemon lying around, just throw that in. I was like, guess what I never have? A charred lemon lying around, but we're gonna make a charred lemon. You could also just throw a whole lemon in. You could throw some lemon peel. And then herbs, fresh herbs, dry herbs, and spices. He likes um, coriander. Fennel and beans is really great together. You don't have to add those. I have oregano and mint today, so I'm gonna put those in. He said if you don't have, um, if you happen to have some confit garlic, you could use that instead of the raw garlic, but the raw garlic was totally fine. And then really whatever um, herbs you have. I mean, rosemary, thyme is great with beans, sage, but a little bit goes a long way. And then these are more like in the, oregano is kind of in the more oily, hearty herb category, and the mint is definitely in the fresh. I'm not gonna chop them up or do anything. I'm just gonna put the whole sprigs in. And then um, he also recommended, as part of his bean cookery practice, adding the um, herbs a couple different times during the cooking. So you get this like long cooked herb flavor, then you get some right at the end. Let's see if we have foam. Oh yeah, it's foamy now. I now have uh, turned the really annoying jingle for cheese glorious cheese into beans glorious beans in my head. So, sorry. Um, all right, so we have achieved a simmer. We've also achieved a good amount of foam. So I'm gonna manage both of those situations, lowering the heat and just skimming this off. It smells beany in a great way. So now that this is simmering, I'm gonna char this lemon. Again, extra, but like, why not? And you don't really have to do anything, just let them go. And I'm going to add the oregano. And again, whatever herb you wanna use is fine, as long as you like the flavor of it. And this is mint. So some of the mint leaves and the oregano leaves are gonna break free and become one with the other bean family. And uh, whichever ones don't, you can just pull the sprigs out at the end if you wanna be more controlled about it. Now adding two different kinds of poultry fat. Obviously you can make this vegetarian, just use all olive oil. And then to get that really generous fat cap that um, Patch talked about, I need to supplement with some olive oil. So, okay, so when you get a can of beans, you know, you don't really use that liquid. Like nine times out of 10, you are not messing with that bean, canned bean liquid. It just it's like very thick and kind of gunky. But when you make your own beans, this liquid is like magic sauce. And when you finish your beans, you might even have bean liquid and don't throw that away because you can use it for braises and for making other pots of beans. Salt, more, again, salting as we go. If you're using, this is diamond, if you use Morton's, like use half the amount that you see me just throwing about with abandon. Everyone who hates black pepper just went to a makeup tutorial. They're done, <laughs> they're out of here. All right, these smell very different than they did when they were fresh. Dropping them in. So this is a really exquisite situation that's going to cook for as long as it takes. The way that Patch described it is that for the most of the bean cooking time, you will feel like nothing is happening and that they will never be tender and they will never be creamy and they will never be done. And then a magic moment will come when they are perfect. And it's wor worth the wait every single time. Managing the temperature and if the water seems like it's gotten too low, that like the beans don't have room to move around without broaching the surface, then just add more water. So in the meantime, we're gonna make some toppings. Now I'm gonna make an aioli. An aioli is a uh, homemade mayonnaise. It's an emulsified sauce. We're using egg yolk and some garlic and olive oil to make a 
mayonnaise. I just need the uh, yolk. Is this tiny bowl big enough? I think it's going to happen. Yeah. Save your whites for making souffle, whatever. Big pinch of salt. OK. Here's our garlic. As if there wasn't enough garlic, you need the flavor of the raw garlic. You know what I mean? Sometimes I always have, doesn't this one have lemon juice? No, splash of water. So the water's just gonna help with the emulsifying. Sometimes I always have lemon juice. Sometimes they have um, mustard. Those are all good choices. You actually need a certain amount of available liquid for the fat to bind to. So sometimes people will put their lemon right in the beginning. The only trick with making an aioli, if you haven't done it before, is that recipes are gonna say add the oil drop by drop at first. And I know it sounds like an exaggeration, but you really have to go drop by drop. This is something you could make in a blender, but every time I make it in a blender, uh, I screw it up. So I always do them by hand. I'm also comfortable making aiolis, so maybe I went a little bit faster than drop by drop. So the beginning stage is important because that's when you're like establishing the emulsion and establishing the emulsion is basically the fat particles and the liquid particles being like, okay, fine, I will bind to you, whatever. And then once they've all decided that they are going to be in that um, chemical embrace, then everybody else who joins is like, oh, this is already an emulsion party. I can just like jump into the situation. So then you can go a little bit faster. It's creamy, it's not greasy or shiny, and I'm not seeing like individual like slick of oil. But if your emulsion breaks, which would be so funny if mine does, you can do it a couple different ways. You can start over with a little bit of water and like a dab of mustard if you're fairly um, comfortable, or you can start over with a fresh egg yolk and whisk the broken um, mixture into that egg yolk as though it were, um, as though you were adding the oil from the beginning. Okay, done. Hand blended aioli. All right, aioli is done. I'm gonna keep that cold. That's gonna get spooned in at the end. Let's check our beans, chase the liquid and stuff. Beans are not done. They're cla clacking around, but I wanna taste the liquid. Because if it's under salted now, it's under salted forever. It's like broth. Mmm. Bean tea, drink up, that is delicious. Okay, I love it. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna make breadcrumbs because why not? You would have stale bread lying around in your little cabin in the woods. I'm just gonna tear it into kind of biggish pieces and then I'm gonna throw it in the food processor. Okay. So again, you don't have to make breadcrumbs if you wanna make beans. All you need is the fat and the salt and the beans and the water. And the thyme. And the thyme, T-I-M-E. Large skillet. A lot of different ways to make breadcrumbs. This is just one of them. Another way would be to maybe toss your bread with the oil and put it in the oven. But I'm going to do it this way. Big pan, medium high heat. When the oil is hot, breadcrumbs are going in. While we're here, we can behold our beans. They're beautiful. So shiny. All right, oil is shimmering. Yeah, I think that was enough fat. These are gonna be good. So I'm just cooking them. I'm making sure that they all absorb some of the oil until they get kind of toasty brown and crisp. Why am I toasting breadcrumbs for beans? Um, texture is the answer. Just a little crunch. Bean time, USA. It smells amazing. 
You can see what has happened. The broth is still pretty clear. It smells very lemony. It smells very herby. The beans themselves are really very intact. See? A beautiful job of not overstimulating them. There's another trick I read that when the bean skin like curls back like that, that that's how you know they're done. I don't think that's true, but it is um, cool. They're totally creamy all the way through. There isn't like a mushy part on the outside and then a tender part in the middle. They cooked very, very evenly. I wanna try the liquid. Do you like my spoon? Could it be any bigger? There's a little bit of, you taste that like, a little bit from the charred lemon, like a little bit of bitterness. And um, if you just recall or remember, just keep in mind that salt, sweet, salt, bitter are those four flavors that you want to have in balance. Another thing that is going to make these extra delicious is a nice glug of vinegar, which I really um, love, especially with beans. So I'm going to add that in. This is great with any, like lentils are so great if you finish them with um, vinegar. I'm really thinking of this as almost like we made a braise of the bean and the beans have been braising in this liquid and to really season the liquid itself. Jeremy Fox is the one who told me that if the, the broth tastes good, the beans will taste good. And I think those are words to live by. So just a couple glugs, this is sherry vinegar. You could use red wine, you could use white wine, um, but that's really going to um, make these even more delicious. I wouldn't add it super early in the cook time because I don't want like cooked vinegar flavor. Pretty good. And then the other thing I'm gonna do here at the last minute is add more of the same herbs that, that I used before. The mint and the oregano really is gonna infuse, infuse into the cooking liquid like tea. And I know it seems crazy, but they need more salt. So, as you recall, we also have aioli and we have quite unevenly toasted breadcrumbs as well. So really get yourself excited about that. This is the kind of thing that I would add like a head of torn kale or Swiss chard or escarole at the end and just let it wilt in there and then all of a sudden you have a bean beans and green soup mm. these things that you think might be beans are actually whole cloves of garlic very delicious all right got my aioli hmm who wants to go on first i'm gonna breadcrumb no i'm gonna aioli <laughs> Gonna bread and <laughs> aioli. So the idea with the aioli is that as you eat, the aioli is gonna infuse into the liquid in a very delicious way. So you'll get that fresh garlic flavor. And then the breadcrumbs are just texture. Fantastic. Mmm. Now I'm kind of in how messed up and different textures they are. Who cares? little pepper. I love pepper. <clears throat> this I would happily eat for dinner. Mm. <laughs> Just love to look at it. Droplets, there's crunchies, there's creamy beans, there's aioli. It looks really good. So perfect pot of beans. Once again, from the top, salt, fat, and thyme. Buy a good bean. Treat it very nicely. I'm just gonna have a bite. Get it out of here. This is the best. Stop. It's too good. It's really too good. I recommend everybody just make a perfect pot of beans. I could not be happier right now. I'm so pleased. Could everybody please leave so I could eat my beans? No, really, leave. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. Delicious bean. 